Welcome to the 300th edition of Comment here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. 300 not out by the grace of God. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my friends here in the studio who work with me and all those who have worked with me over these 300 editions. I'd like to thank all the callers, well, most of the callers uh, over that uh, 300 editions and I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for watching. And I hope, God willing, for 300 more, at least. You can call me here in the big conversation, the great debate, at 442086014555. You call us, we'll call you back, establish a clear line. And remember, if you get on the TV with me, the volume on your TV has to be down at zero, or no one will understand either of us, and I'll have to press swiftly on, more swiftly than I have been doing. SMS is 447800008066, and the email address is comment at presstv.co.uk. Now that the dust has settled in Tel Aviv, the dust, I mean, from the knees of David Cameron's suit trousers, because of course he spent most of the time in what they call Israel on his knees in front of the most hated, the most vile leader in the world. Benjamin Netanyahu is despised even in Washington, especially in the White House. But that didn't stop David Cameron from going the extra mile, using language that the United States government would never use, has never used, using language that no British Prime Minister has ever used, and language which goes way beyond what the British Foreign Office would recommend him to say, he threw himself in front of Netanyahu and endorsed effectively the criminal nature of that regime. Now, what do I mean? Well, he used phrases like, I'm here to support the state that they call Israel the national state of the Jewish people. This is a formulation that the ultra-right in Israel insist upon, that the Palestinians cannot possibly ever agree to, because of course it recognizes not only that the state of Israel, as they call it, will continue to exist, but has every right to exist, and that every person in that state who isn't a Jew is de facto, officially, a second-class citizen. There is no other leader in the world using that language except David Cameron in front of the Knesset in what they call Israel yesterday. He also said that he would oppose any sanctions, any boycotting, of the apartheid state. This is the same man who's on his feet against Russia, threatening Russia with all kinds of EU sanctions, who has been on his feet imposing all manner of sanctions against the Islamic Republic of Iran, saying that boycotting what they call Israel will never work and he will never support it. In fact, he called it vile. So it's vile for me to decide that in Waitrose I will not buy Israeli products as a matter of principle. That's vile. This he said whilst visiting on a deep red carpet which he had rolled out for Netanyahu, a state which is violating human rights day and daily, which is involved in a murderous blockade against people entirely at their mercy in the Gaza Strip, which is illegally settling whole swathes of illegally occupied territory, and which is in defiance of dozens, dozens, scores of United Nations Security Council resolutions seeking to govern their conduct. Boycotting them is vile and will never work, but boycotting Russia, taking sanctions against Russia, as previously against the Islamic Republic of Iran, 
Not only is that right, that's what David Cameron fights for. You really couldn't make it up. You couldn't make it up that visiting a state which regularly invades and occupies its neighbor's territory, which holds hundreds of nuclear weapons and the missiles to deliver them. Yes, Mr. Cameron, easily to London, I promise you, easily. From Demona to London is well within an afternoon's work for the apartheid state's nuclear strike force. This state which holds hundreds of nuclear weapons illegally, in defiance of international law, unregistered, undeclared, uninspected, in a country that refuses to sign the Non-Proliferation Treaty, would never dream of allowing inspectors to come and see its works. That country you wholly support in words and in deeds, and in words indeed that nobody else in the world is currently using. Now, I must tell you, I'm not one for conspiracy theories, as most of those currently interested in the Malaysian aircraft already know. I prefer to wait for the facts and wish the Chinese, the Vietnamese, and above all, the Malaysians, uh, whose plane it was, to ascertain the facts. I'm utterly uninterested in most conspiracy theories. But I got to wondering just exactly what impels, moves David Cameron to go to what they call Israel and behave in the way that he did over the last couple of days. It's not for votes. The number of supporters of Israel in Britain is tiny. It's really tiny. It's like I don't know, the number of people who are Mormons, the number of people who worship at the so-called Church of Latter-day Saints. It's tiny. It's not for votes. So what is it for? It's not because it helps Britain's national interest, because it damages Britain's national interests. The two billion Muslims in the world heard David Cameron speaking in Tel Aviv loud and clear. So what is it? It's money. It has to be money. It's not ideology. Cameron has no ideology. It's not Britain's national interest, like Prince Charles went waving his sword the other day in Saudi Arabia. This was to boost British business. It doesn't boost British business. Lying down in front of Netanyahu. It's not about votes, so money is the only thing left. And I think it's about time that people paid closer attention to that question. Who's giving what money to whom and for what? Anyway, he says boycotting what they call Israel won't work. I know that it is working. The sanctions that ordinary people have placed on the products of these illegal settlements in what they call the West Bank last year cost over a hundred million shekels to those occupiers. I know that individual sanctions against what they call Israel do work, and we must all press everyone else that we know to do the same. Now we come to the issue of Russia. The man who says sanctions won't work against Israel and are vile is threatening sanctions against Russia. Is Russia paying very much attention? Doesn't look like it to me. Only a few hours to the referendum in Crimea, entirely within the rights of the people of Crimea, who were given away without being asked by Russia to Ukraine in 1954. And at the time of talking to you now, live here on Thursday evening, I would think it looks a fairly safe bet that Crimea is going to vote to join Russia this weekend. And I don't think David Cameron's sanctions will do anything to stop it. Aidan is in London, always worth hearing, even disagreeing with. Aidan, welcome back to the show, my friend. Does boycotting hi. what they call Israel work? Yeah, hi, George. Yeah, thanks for having me on this very special edition of Comment. I mean, it is. I think the, 
the what you've just said was probably the best opening I've heard in the 300 episodes that I've been watching you by far uh, Thank you, the most. Yeah, I it was I, that was if there's ever a speech I had to hear in the last few days that must have been it. I can't thank you enough for allowing me to air my honest opinion sometimes, even if at times I have been a bit over emotional and it's you know, no, you no. Have been a I get over emotional yeah. too, Aidan. Yeah, but it's it's all good. It's all good. It's all good yeah. emotions. I mean, to broadcast our intentions are good. Episodes, yeah, yeah, always, always to yeah. broadcast three hundred episodes of comment it's by no stretch of the imagination a small achievement. This show truly gives a voice to the voices and is an open lesson in freedom of speech to the so-called de- developed democracies, just like this Mickey Mouse one we have here in the UK. Yeah, I'd like to thank the Islamic Revolution, Press TV, but most of all George Galloway for fighting to keep this program running for 300 episodes. God bless you, George. Thank you, my friend. What a beautiful call to start out with. Thanks, Aidan. I really appreciate those words, especially coming from you, with whom I often disagree. Bani Mustafazi is in Sweden. We get around the world. Let's hear from him. Go ahead, Bani. Okay. Yes, good evening, Mr. George Galloway. Good to hear from you, like always. Thank you, sir. Tell me, do EU sanction threats work? Well, uh, well, until the day we have this common sense who says uh, we do what we want, you do what we say, uh, we have okay. to have this, this cr- struggle. I don't believe so. I hope uh, the Russian will remain firm in front of the uh, you know, U.S. and their friends. They've been uh, invading the, the world since 1980s. Since I know myself after the revolution. Uh, well, uh, they've been invading the world a lot longer than that. Uh, yes, you, know, you know, there's only, I think it's only 23 countries in the whole world that Britain has not invaded yet. Only 23 in the whole world that they have not invaded yet. And the United States has invaded 50 countries in the last 50 years. All the way I agree with you. You are fully right. You are fully right. And I wonder how we can go on and confront these people. We need people more like you in the world, you know. And therefore, I said maybe with this uh, smart way of phones and whatever, to create this world parliament and somehow with the petition to get these people off the world and, you know, uh, stop letting them to rule us forever. Because well, this is a kind of world parliament that we have here now. Aidan was in London, you were in Sweden. Beautiful. There'll be callers God from all over you. the world this evening. God maybe maybe you, we need yes. to maybe we need to run comment twice a week from now on. Please note in Tehran. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much indeed for calling a special edition here, the 300th edition of Comment. Mohammed is on the line in Wales, and it's definitely always a pleasure to hear from him. Mohammed. Hi Welcome there. to the show, brother. Good evening to you. Salam alaikum. Walaikum salam. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, sir. What it is, basically, I mean, our um, uh, prime minister has gone over to Israel again. Uh, and uh, basically, the sanction works for others, but not for Israel. Yes. You know, it's a double, double, double standard. Well, uh... All the time, uh, when it comes to Israel, America, European countries, they are all uh, hypocrites, you know? Um, they, they how don't do you think do... they square it in their own head, Mohammed? How, uh, how do you think they square it in their own head? They must be aware that they're arguing for sanctions yeah. to force somebody to stop sending their army yeah. into somebody else's territory and they will impose draconian sanctions if they don't. But somebody who for 60 years has had its soldiers on somebody else's territory is to be rewarded, and anyone applying sanctions against them is vile. Well, what it is, basically, uh, this, is, this is what it is. Because Palestinian, right, okay, they, they, they are a very poor people, you know? And uh, so that is, to them, it really doesn't matter. Israel, uh, as, uh, like you say so many times, they got, uh, um, uh, they got a Rolls Royce, voice body in the world, right, you know? And as soon as Mr. Kamran or any European leader say anything against Israel, everybody's on the phone to their MPs, right, and uh, to Prime Minister, 
and also the uh, big large companies are phoning them, threatening them. Uh, so basically, that's what it is. They caught them by the. Yeah, I, I, I wish so it was. Early, I, I wish really. basically that's what it was, Mohammed. But I, I'm not. I'm not convinced. As I said earlier, it's not about votes because the number of votes in this country that are in any way dependent on being a slave to Israel are very, 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 very small. Much smaller than the number of people whose votes could be won by taking the opposite point of view. Most of the media in Britain is not controlled by Jews, contrary to many conspiracy theories. Most of the companies are not controlled by Jews. Um, not, most of the banks are not controlled by Jews, contrary to many conspiracy theories. And in any case, many Jews in Britain are with us. So it's, if it's not about any of those things, what is it about? And I'm starting to suspect it's about folding money. I bet you that some class of funding of the Conservative Party has been promised or is finding its way into the election coffers of the Tory election fund. That's the only rationale I can think of. And by the way, one of the reasons why I know it's not for votes is because all three parties, Labour, Liberal Democrat and Tory, are all virtually equally slavishly supporting Israel. So it's not as if there's a differentiation between the parties. Do you follow me? Anyway, Mohammed, thanks for the call. As always, it wouldn't have been complete without hearing from you. Jacob is in London, and I always like to hear from him too. Jacob, go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you very much again for another very fantastic episode. Thank Sounds you. Good. You know, this is wonderful that you, you know, you're here. Uh, the voice of the voiceless. Thank you very much. Thank what you. What I want to say very briefly is about uh, number one about Israel. The fact is that many people don't understand that many people who have gone to Israel, they've tried to actually get out, but they've realised they cannot they cannot uh, liquidate the finances to get out of Israel. Once you're in Israel, you got you, it's like a prison. You get stuck in there. Even if you're Jewish, you can't get out. <laughs> so many true. people are tricked to go to Israel, and there's so much prostitution, so much drugs. So much uh, horribleness that yeah, is happening yeah. in the state of Israel. It's very ugly. It's a very ugly society in Israel, you know. It's extremely ugly, and people, many people don't realize that many Jews are suffering at the hands of Zionists, and many people don't understand that Jews are actually the biggest, the biggest stain on the Jewish uh, society, the biggest stain on the Jewish uh, uh, culture is actually the Zionism. And yeah. before the Zionism, Jews were living side by side with Arabs, with Muslims, with Christians. There was no problem. Zionists came and said, no. You're not allowed to do that. You, all, you, you, you shouldn't live in London, in New York, in Iran, in Tehran. No, no, no. All of you should come to this land that we've occupied. And if you don't come here, then you're not a good person. You're not a good Jew. And that is what everybody was told. And now people have realized this is the trick. And about this David Cameron going there and this nonsense that he's supporting Israel, he's basically preparing for his retirement. He's looking forward to become a, you know... A, Maybe one of to be as rich as Tony Blair. Exactly. I think he's yeah. looking forward to becoming non-executive, uh, one of those useless jobs where he doesn't have any role except he just collects money. You know, Jacob, uh, let, me, let me ask you this, brother, um, because it relates uh, to what you've just said and most powerfully coming from you. Um, is this one of the reasons why the Zionists sent gunmen to the Maidan in Kiev to help a revolution? which was the cutting edge of which and the heavy lifting of which was being done by actually outright Nazi anti-Semites. The, the bizarre alliance in the Maidan between former Israeli army officers who've spoken openly about their role in uh, Haaretz and Nazis with swastikas on their arms, the most ugly alliance you could possibly imagine, is part of the thinking of this. Well, if these Nazis come to power in Kiev and they hate Jews so much, the remaining Ukrainian Jews will feel that they have to go and settle in Palestine. Is that part of the thinking? Well, 
uh, of course, in order, to, in order to understand what's happening in Kiev, one has to understand how the Zionists actually think. The, the, think, the thinking that they have got is not, is not as smart as you may imagine, because they know how the, people, uh, how the people think. They think that they don't understand that people associate uh, Nazism with being anti-Jewish, whereas Nazism and Zionism is exactly the same thing, is one and the same. If you turn the Star of David, inside the Star of David, every Star of David, there is a swastika. Swastika was based on the Star of David. They're one and the same. What has happened here, the Jews have become the victims of the Zionists, and the Jews are constantly getting it in the neck all the time. And now they've started on the Arabs and the Muslims. It's exactly the same thing they were doing back in 19, 1940s and 50s, saying, oh, Jews are being persecuted, but they were actually doing it themselves. And then they came over to Palestine. Well, both of these things are true, J Jacob. They were being persecuted, well, and the Zionists were quite happy about them being persecuted course, because it suited, of course, suited of their uh, political agenda. Jacob, we'll have to continue this another time because yeah. I have on the line Roshan Mohammed Saleh, our star reporter, who's on the front line in Crimea. Roshan, how are you doing? Are you, can you hear me out there? Uh, yeah, George, I can hear you loud and clear. Tell me, what's the situation on the eve of the referendum? Well, the referendum is going to pass, George. Russia is going to join, uh, uh, sorry, Crimea is going to join Russia. There's no doubt about that. Um, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. I mean, this is a very kind of pro-Russian area. Um, the people here are by and large ethnic Russians. They speak Russian as a first language. Uh, a lot of people have told me that, you know, Khrushchev gave Crimea to Ukraine like um, giving his wife a box of chocolates. Yeah, you know, he was uh, drunk. They, they uh, very... He was apparently drunk one night and did it. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, the people here are very resentful uh, that um, Crimea was given away to Ukraine. They don't really feel Ukrainian, they feel Russian. Um, and they don't feel that this is an occupation of Russian troops. They welcome the Russian troops that are here. They welcome the pro-Russian defense forces that are here. And I must admit, I haven't seen any violence since I've been here. I've been all over Crimea. I was in Yalta today, where the famous Second World War conference was held. I went to Sevastopol, where the famous harbor is, which endured uh, two sieges uh, during the Crimean War and then by the Nazis. I've been in Simferopol. I've been all over Crimea, and I haven't seen any violence whatsoever. Um, uh, I know the Western media are talking about uh, Crimea on the brink and uh, violence uh, breaking out everywhere, but I think the only people that are getting harassed a bit are Western journalists, and that's because they're Russia bashing. Uh, and if you do that, then you know people aren't going to like it. Mm. But um, I, I would say that people on the street are telling me that um, you know uh, the sentiment is that the Kiev. Uh, so-called government is a coup government. It's full of uh, neo-Nazis and fascists. And they don't want anything of it, and they feel as though you know, Yanukovych may have been a corrupt president. Uh, there's not much love for him even here in Crimea, but they say that ultimately he was a democratically elected president. He should have been allowed to finish his term. Putin had no choice but to, to move in because, you know, ultimately it's a bit like um, a pro-Russian movement taking over Texas or Mexico. Putin had to respond uh, because NATO wants to, to move into Ukraine. The EU wants to move into Ukraine to surround Russia, to strangle Russia. So Putin had no choice. And is it their view, uh, and the people you're talking to, that it's a foregone conclusion that Russia will accept them in? Because, of course, Crimea voting is one thing, but Russia would have to then agree to face the consequences of taking Crimea into the Russian Federation. People think there's no doubt well, about that, Roshan? Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, I think that, you know, obviously the logistics, the practicalities have yet to be worked out. Um, some say that Crimea will be a burden on Russia, but it looks as though it's a burden, if you can call it that, that Russia is willing to bear. Okay. Um, you know, all, uh, the, the, the media is, is, is saying that it's completely a, a foregone conclusion. A done yeah. deal. Roshan, face uh, the hardships of Yalta and uh, Sebastopol uh, with courage. It's a beautiful part of the world that you're in. I will be back, God willing, after just three minutes, after a short news bulletin on this, the 300th edition of Comment, we're discussing sanctions and boycotts of what they call Israel and of Russia. Don't go away. 
I'll be back in three minutes time, God willing. Welcome back to the second half of what is the 300th edition of Comment here on Press TV. Still the voice of the voiceless. Calls coming in from all over the world. Literally, we are talking tonight about David Cameron's shameful performance in Tel Aviv, where he has only just settled the dust off the knees of his suit trousers because he spent most of it on his knees in front of Netanyahu, the most hated ruler uh, probably anywhere in the world, but loved by the British Prime Minister. You really couldn't make that up. And we're talking about the contrast uh, between the description of sanctions and boycott on the apartheid state being vile, but being actually the only language that's being spoken between the EU, the United States and Russia in the wake of the events which were provoked in the first place by the EU and the United States in the Ukraine. So, double standards or what? Salad is on the line in Mogadishu, in Somalia. Salad, welcome to the show, my friend. Can you hear me well? Thank you, George. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to take back the program. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the Russia and the U.S. Uh, issue. Oh yes. Uh, the U.S. and the U.S. and Russia are two similar powers in the world, but somehow they are different. The U.S. think that they are the most powerful government in the world. Uh, they think that they are responsible for every issue and every government in the world. For example, uh, they think. Through this, uh, uh, to the government in uh, around the world, like Afghanistan, and uh, they are, for example, uh, troops of Americans in Somalia, uh, in order to uh, do their interests from that countries. But unfortunately, when Russia tries uh, try to uh, do their interests from uh, 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 a neighborhood country. Uh, the U.S. is stood against uh, in a conflict, and unfortunately, uh, the the U.S. thinks that they are responsible for the uh, issue of every government in the world. Indeed, so, indeed, Russia. they think that somebody, God maybe, gave them the mission to reshape the world in their own image. I was once on a radio program in uh, in Washington, Seattle in Washington State, and the, mm -hmm. uh, the presenter uh, of the program, whose name was Medved, uh, so presumably of Russian extraction, uh, but uh, very much a Stars and Stripes man now, he opened the show by welcoming all the listeners to this radio station on the greatest country in God's green earth. And I opened by saying, if you're the greatest country on God's green earth, that means my country and every other country is second best, at least, uh, to you. And it's because they really believe that, that we have this problem in the world. They think that they have the right to dispense uh, judgment on other people in the way that uh, the pirate captain uh, accused so-called Alexander the Great uh, of doing. As the pirate captain said, you who call yourself an emperor and call other men as you please. Salad, thanks very much for that call. We are discussing EU sanctions and the threats against Russia by Britain, uh, especially uh, hawkishly. And David Cameron has much to lose, of course, if uh, all these uh, rich young boys don't enroll in Eton next year if Harrods and, uh, and uh, Sloan Square and Sloan Street are bereft of rich, big-spending Russian shoppers this year, if the London property market starts to see a flight 
of Russian property owners in some parts of London, well, my goodness, that'll suit quite a lot of people, including, as it happens, President Putin. Niall is in Dublin. Always a pleasure to talk to him. Niall, welcome back to the show. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Brother George. It's a great, it's, I feel it's a pleasure uh, to be on your 300th anniversary, 300 uh, show, it has to be said. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, George, I just want to uh, go back to uh, the beginning of the show, you know, when you so clearly uh, and concisely and succinctly uh, showed up the Western double standards in relation to Israel, the whole idea of, of sanctions against Israel, refusing to put sanctions on Israel, and uh, rushing uh, to the fore uh, uh, in relation to putting sanctions on Russia. You know, it's absolutely bizarre in that, in that sense. And it, it is. You know, it's, it's so bizarre. The, it's the, so the, bizarre, the, Niall. That's why I asked an earlier caller, what do you think's in their mind when they're saying this? I mean, if I was saying something that made yeah. me look such an idiot because of what I was saying about another place just yesterday, I would know it. I would know it in my mind. What are the journalists who listen to it? Why don't they say? But actually, you said something different about Russia just yesterday. What do you think the thought process, Niall? Or do they just George. not care? Do they think we're all idiots and we can't uh, recognize it? You know, maybe, maybe they do think we're all idiots because, George, you know, I'm on this planet long enough to, to sift through all the BS that, that, that's been going on, you know, over that period of time, especially what's been happening in, in the media. You know, because the second, ar the second argument is in relation to the territorial integrity of the Ukraine. Well, George, these are the same powers. These are the same countries that raid roughshod over the territorial integrity of Serbia back in 1999 when they illegally detached Kosovo uh, from it through, the, through an, an illegal war. And then we had Afghanistan, and then we had Iraq, and now we have the, the whole idea in situation in the Ukraine. I believe Russia was left with no choice whatsoever uh, but to act in the Crimea, Crimea because what happened was, George, in the Crimea was a democratically elected government that was elected by the people, for the people, was overthrown uh, by what can, be, what can be described as a coalition of neoliberals and uh, neo-Nazis. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt about that. They, they can't even begin to deny that one. Niall, it's a pleasure. I'm cutting you short only because there are so right. many people calling this special anniversary show, including Reem, who's in North Carolina in the United States of America. Reem. Welcome to the show. Yes, uh, well, alaikum, George. Well, alaikum, salam. Nice to, to hear from show. you. Go ahead. Uh, let me comment on the issue of the David Cameron visit uh, fast. Um, whatever political reason he, he has behind it, but nevertheless, extremely bad, bad speech. And shortly, David Cameron, you sucked. I mean, any fair person will be against the uh, occupation that lasted 47 years. They are still practicing terrorism against uh, um, the Palestinians and, and acting as victims all over the world. And um, uh, regarding the boycott, extremely for it, of course. I mean, the, according to Ma Reef newspaper, uh, they uh, reported $30 million loss. Well, great. Hope it continues and spreads. Um, one last thing, um, just opening, uh, uh, broadening uh, eyes. I know you like to think outside the box, but why suddenly uh, making products and have it printed as uh, made in the, uh, Israel or the occupation of Israel? Why suddenly? I mean, we know that so many companies uh, all over the world with all the brand names and all that have um, the owners. We know that they support Israel and they send probably their profit there. So why suddenly opening up? That's, I mean, that's something to think about. Yes, and it is. You. In fact, we could get stickers saying there's blood on those oranges and stick them on Jaffa uh, oranges. We could get stickers saying there's blood on these dates, there's blood on these uh, 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 artichokes, there's blood on these uh, vegetables that are being sold in our supermarkets. We should go around sticking them on those products. At the very least, it'll give somebody work going around to take them off again. Reem is in North Carolina in the United States, and that's been a fantastic tour de horizon, and we're back in London to talk to Dwale on the very same subjects of sanctions, but this time on the EU sanctions. Dwale, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Press TV again. Um, 
Um, George, just a um, quick one regarding the uh, the Russian, um, um, sorry, the Ukrainian uh, problem that is going on and that's escalating. Um, it's just I'm just I'm not on any I'm not for the American side or so not the American side but the the influence from the West and the, and and the Russians. Mm. I think the Ukrainians have to be left alone and uh, um, and left to uh, left to their business and 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 not be basically. Um, pushed and pressurized from either end. End of the day, the two, there's two basically speaking uh, um, um, people in there, and um, they should solve this problem peacefully without... I mean, uh, it was it, yeah, um, the Americans that have been funding a lot of money, or the, was it the West that has been funding a lot five of money? Five billion. The U.S. alone gave five yeah. billion dollars, according yeah, to their own that, ambassador, to yeah, the fire, Ukrainian yeah. opposition. Yeah, abs absolutely, absolutely wrong. That was absolutely wrong. And it's not $5 million in aid or nothing, but it's, it's money to basically change them and make Ukraine part of NATO. But at the same time, Russia's have always be, the Russia has always been involved in stopping gas and stuff like that. So they're, human, they're, they're not really innocent in it as well. So, I mean, my point is small countries like Ukraine and other countries across the world that are being used as proxies by, ma by major powers or superpowers, whatever we call them, it just has to stop. And people in the world have to live, you know, and uh, th uh, my point is just let them live. Well, the, the, the problem, uh, brother, is, first of all, Ukraine is not a small country. Its population is the same as Britain's uh, population almost, and that's not a small population. Secondly, mm -hmm. It's too late to say leave them alone to sort out their problems now because the problems they have now are because they were not left alone. Uh, the U.S. Uh, subversion, destabilization of Ukraine has produced a certain political outcome, which is a government claiming legitimacy but having no elected authority in Kiev, which is rejected uh, by 47 percent at least of the population of the country. You see, the Russian speakers and ethnic Russians were ready to live in Ukraine when there was a Soviet Union, because it didn't really matter which part of the Soviet Union you lived in. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they found themselves, the Russian speaking 47%, as a minority in a new country. Now, they could also live with that as long as the Ukraine had a government that was ready to work with both uh, sides, the European Union and Russia, and was not ready to be a base for the European Union and NATO. But now we have a coup government in Kiev, which is openly saying, send us your rockets and make a base here in the Ukraine. And the Russian-speaking people in the Ukraine can't accept that. And you can't imagine or uh, expect Russia to uh, uh, accept it. Thanks for the call. All the way to Canada now. Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's Gary. He knows what he's talking about. Gary, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Gary. Ah, good evening, George. Good evening to you, sir. Welcome to this uh, anniversary show. Absolutely. It's an honor. It's just an honor. I'm so happy to be on. Thank you. And uh, it couldn't have happened at a better, at a more appropriate moment. Uh, than the aftermath of this uh, Cameron display oh, wow. in uh, in Israel. Even so, even the Prime uh, Minister of Canada would have had to <laughs> would have had to work hard to outdo David Cameron yesterday. Uh, I think so. Uh, what 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 I'm excited about is this prospect. We know the uh, we we know the modern day source of this problem. There was an event. Uh, 97 years ago uh, called the Balfour Declaration and it has never been rescinded no nope. so on November 2nd of 2017 will be the hundredth anniversary uh, of the Balfour Declaration and I would like to uh, to launch a billion signature global petition to, uh, requesting that the British government rescind uh, the Balfour Declaration. That's How's a very that good idea. I, I don't think we should set show. the number at a billion, though we ought to be able to get a billion. There's two billion Muslims alone. Never uh, mind all course. the hundreds of millions of non-Muslims who feel the same way as us. But I do think a campaign running up to 2017, the 
centenary of this dastardly crime that British imperialism committed against the Palestinian people is a very good idea, Gary. Let's get together behind the scenes online and try and launch that, see if we can get funding for that, see if we can get a secretariat that could actually organize that across the world. Great thinking, Gary. Thanks very much indeed for that call uh, from Canada. I'm racing through the calls because it's a special evening. I want as many on as possible. Fatima is on the line in Nigeria. Fatima, welcome to the show. Thanks for ringing. Hi. Go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam. Thank you very much. Go on. Oh, Ranway, I'm very happy to be on air with you. Uh, I hope, I hope uh, this my call will make a change. Uh, I'm calling on Press TV yes. to make uh, your program twice a week because really we need to make uh, an alliance, an alliance of the same against the insane worldwide. And uh, your program once a week is not enough. So I. Uh, I'm really calling on our press TV to make a program twice a week. Excellent. Uh, well, I, 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 I would do it. I would do it twice a week. I think it is a university of the airwaves. I think it is a world parliament. The countries that we've talked to just this evening, uh, including your good self, Fatima, in Nigeria, prove that all over the world, people are interested in the things that we are discussing and the way we are discussing them. And uh, thanks to Press TV, we have to, because of course, there would be no comment if it were not for Press TV, and there would be no Press TV if it were not for the Islamic Republic of Iran. Hallelujah, I salute them. Thanks, Fatima, for the call. Jeff is in the UK. Jeff, go ahead. Jeff. Hi, George, thanks for taking my call. Welcome, sir, go ahead. And it's great to be on this uh, anniversary edition. Mm. I think it's uh, 300 episodes. It'll be remembered, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's amazing for any show, but for one like uh, this one, it really has had everything against Indeed. it. You know, and absolutely it. live. I have no yes. idea what you're going to say before you say it. Go yes. ahead. <laughs> yes, I was just going to say, I think this, this obviously ridiculous statement of Cameron's that he's made as uh, Israeli jets bomb the Gaza Strip today, yeah. Yeah. I think... Uh, it, 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 I mean, you're right, it's so absurd. I mean, even if we were to accept, for argument's sake, and I'm not accepting it, but if we were, that Russia deserved to be sanctioned or boycotted, yes. it's strange because there's really little that we could hope to achieve because Russia doesn't get most of its resources or its profits or what it needs from us. Indeed. But it's Russia, the other way around. Yes, it's... It, we're it, actually it, sanctioning ourselves. Absolutely, and Russia is a huge country. Israel is a very small country, and it gets all of its sustenance and what it needs from us. And that's the true, you know, absurdity of what he said, really, uh, George. I mean, think about it. I, I, I mean, if the West were to propose cutting off, a, I don't know, a fraction of the aid that Israel receives, I mean, if Obama were to make that telephone call tomorrow, I think Netanyahu would phone back, and, uh, you know, you'd find that the conflict had been settled. I mean, Israel... Well, it, or, it'd be, or it'd be overthrown. Yeah, overthrown. I mean, overthrown. You're, you've, you've identified perfectly, if I may say so, you've identified perfectly this conundrum, that Russia is not vulnerable to EU sanctions. The EU will be sanctioning themselves, even if you accept that they've done anything that deserves sanctioning. The state that they call Israel, this apartheid Zionist settler state, is utterly vulnerable to boycott and sanction, and the Western governments could force it overnight or within a week to actually do what international law demands that they must do. Jeff, thanks for that call. Herr Hatch is in Lebanon on the subject of EU sanctions. Herr Hatch, if I'm pronouncing your name properly, thanks very much for yeah. ringing from Lebanon. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mr. George Galloway. I would like to congratulate you, Press TV, and all the staff for the 300th edition. Thank you so much. Uh, 
first question, what happened to the February agreement between the Russians and the Europeans? Uh, it Second was broken uh, oh. by the European Union leaders who sat there in a solemn and binding discussion with the then president of the Ukraine uh, and uh, signed an agreement which was broken within hours by the mob and the recognition of the mob swiftly followed. That's what happened. Okay, the second, the second, the second question. Yeah. If if they were so democratically elected, why they are bending the Russian language, the yes. native Russian language? With all the problems that the Ukraine has, it's virtually bankrupt. By the way, their first act, first act, was to ban not just the Russian language, but the Polish language as well. They ban Polish, they ban Russian. When at least 47% of the population are Russian speakers, and at least 5% of the population are Polish speakers. That was their first action. Harhatch, I've got to press on, but thanks for calling, because we're running towards the end of the 300th edition. Abdul is in Reading in England. Probably be the last caller. Abdul, go ahead. Hello, George. H how are you? By the grace of God, I'm good. Fighting fit. Yes, ready yes. for another 300 editions. Volunteering yes, yes, yes. for a second one every week. Go on. Uh, thank you. Well, with regard to the British uh, Prime Minister's visit to Israel and his statements, it doesn't surprise me, but uh, I have always wondered uh, what power Israel has over European countries and certainly the, uh, the U.S. Yeah. To such an extent, to such an extent that uh, the leaders of those countries have to visit Israel before elections to show their support. I mean, we, we Arabs should have this power because we we control most of the energy resources in the world, but maybe and most of the sovereign wealth, most of the <laughs> sovereign wealth. Yeah, but because we are divided, I mean, Saudi and Qatari dispute is an example. But I, I want to, want to say one thing very quickly, George, if you allow me. Yes. Regarding the Israeli-Arab conflict, I, I think there are standards to be, uh, that have to be met uh, to win a victory, for example. And examples of these standards are mercy, justice. I think the Arabs nowadays don't have th those standards. We don't, have, we, we, we don't deserve victory, to be honest. Look at, for, for example, look at what Salah Adin did when he entered Jerusalem. I mean, he gave the criminal justice and showed mercy to the people. I mean, God, God knows what Arabs will do if they, if they, have, if they win uh, a similar victory. But I think we... I lost hope in the current... No, generation. don't lose hope, Abdul. I don't, I, uh, I you, make, hope. you make some powerful points. We don't have time to uh, properly deal with them. But it ought to be the case that David Cameron is visiting the Arab capitals and telling the Arab audiences how he's going to come to the aid of the Palestinians because the Arabs are potentially far more powerful in the world than the Zionists. The question is, as you say, a question of unity, integrity, and faith. Well, it's been a phenomenal 300 editions. I pray to God that I'm still around to present 300 more. It's been marvelous. Mm -hmm.